Um, so leading up when we knew COVID was there um, in China, it kind of in my mind was like Ebola or Zika or anything else. Like we'll hear about it for a little while, but life will go on as normal and we'll be fine. Then it came to the United States and a couple of weeks before Rapid's diagnosed the first case, there was a rumor that we had. And at that point, I guess pride overtook a little bit of fear. And I was like, no, we don't. We don't have COVID. What are you talking about? Um, and then we diagnosed our first case. And at that point, it was, okay, all hands on deck. How are we going to fight this? How are we going to provide the best care to our patients in the safest manner? Now, I think looking back, a lot of the fear stemmed from just not knowing. Over the past year, we've learned so much about COVID, about its presentation, about different treatment options, and it's still a very scary virus. It's a very scary situation, but there's hope at the end because we are able to work towards a cure. So being in the South, everybody loves to love on everybody, and I vividly remember being in the grocery store um, during the start of COVID and I hadn't seen either set of my grandparents and seeing my grandma and her saying oh my god can I hug you and to me that was like now I have to ask permission to even hug our family members and implementing these COVID safety guidelines into daily life has been the biggest challenge for me. So I was what has become um, affectionately become known as a COVID bride. My wedding was in May of 2020. So in March, when all of this started, um, those were some very uncertain times. We didn't know if we were gonna have to cap our guest list, if it was just gonna be us at the courthouse, um, or what was gonna happen. You know, thankfully we were able to implement practices so we could have the wedding that we wanted and be able to have the very special time and people pull together and even through losing vendors and having to kind of do things on our own we were able to have a very special memorial night um, but leading up to that that was very rocky circumstances <laughs> Yeah, so being in the ER, it's definitely been an experience. You know, people who come in for XYZ and you don't expect COVID end up testing positive. And so I feel like um, we have to be on a heightened awareness because of that. And we have to just think everybody has it. And even though we are seeing a um, decline in cases, it's still there. We still have to be aware in the back of our minds, like, okay, yes, you just got in a car wreck, but we may also have to, you know, treat you for COVID while you're here. or. I know you're having a heart attack and I know we gotta get you to the cath lab, but I have to stick this Q-tip up your nose and swab you for COVID. That's kind of been the biggest um, adjustment in the ER, is making sure that while we're caring to why they're here, we're also still being mindful and still treating them in the appropriate manner. So not only over the past year have we faced a worldwide pandemic, we've also been through two very, um, very serious hurricanes and an ice storm. So before COVID, we knew, I knew what it meant to be a part of the Rapids team, but since then I've learned what it's been like to be a part of the family. I mean, seeing everybody pull together and say, you know, what damage do you have? How can I come help? Or, you know, how can I help your family in this time? What do you need? Do you need somewhere to stay while you're at work so that you're not exposing your family? What can I do to help? And that starts with management and goes all the way down. Um, so it's just shown how close and how much Rapids cares for their employees.